Hi everyone, it's Miss Elise from the Morristown and Morris Township Library, and today I have another art adventure for you where we're going to be talking about Impressionism and Claude Monet. I'm sure many of you have heard of Claude Monet before, but um, because he is most notoriously known for being the best Impressionist painter of the time, um, but specifically we are going to be talking about um, a couple of his pieces, including Woman with a Parasol, or Madame and Her Son, by Claude Monet in 1875, and his Water Lily series. So, The Woman with a Parasol is located at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. It is about 145 years old and is made of oil paint. This specifically is a piece that's influential in art because of its brevity and almost in the moment appearance. Monet said himself he wanted it to appear more like a casual family outing rather than a formal portrait, which is exactly what this piece suggests. The posing is in motion and doesn't exactly highlight the features of the figures, giving them more of an air of mystery which creates that in the moment effect. This piece is also a part of the Impressionist movement, which was a movement where short, quick brush strokes, separation of color, sketch-like finish, and a modern subject matters were favored as a way of counteracting the realism movement, which was all about capturing the exact realisticness of a scene where Impressionism actually wanted to capture the essence and the feeling of a scene instead. Impressionist painters also really enjoyed painting outside as it drew them closer to nature, their preferred subject matter, because it was so bright and colorful which mimicked their paintings. It also allowed for them to feel the intensity of the feelings surrounding them, which um, they also used to fuel the inspiration for many of their paintings. Like I said before, Monet is considered to be one of the best professional Impressionist painters of the time, and is mainly really well known for his water lily series, which range in various different sizes, colors, angles, shapes, and um, perspectives, but all feature the water lily as its main subject matter. Impressionism and post-impressionism are usually many people's favorite art movements and paintings because of its relatability. The paintings are realistic, but capture the essence of a scene rather than exactly matching everyday life, which is kind of what we like to picture when we think about our daily lives. The colors and the hasty brush strokes also seem to attract attention because then it feels a little more creative and artistic, which helps to keep the feeling of art alive within the human spirit. So, with that in mind, I'm going to be walking you through how to do an Impressionist painting yourself today, so let's get into the materials that you're going to need. So the materials you are going to be needing for this craft include a lot of paint and assorted paint, um, accessories like paintbrushes, for example. These are the type of paintbrushes I will be using, but obviously you can use whatever you have offhand in your house. But if you want to know how I do it, I'm using a 1 inch Blick Essentials uh, brush, a number 4 flat brush, this one, these all, I'm using all flats today, which means that they have a square brush head. I'm also be going to using the size 1 flat, which is a lot smaller than the 4. And I'm also going to be using the 2 brush, which is just in between the 1 and the 4. Last but not least, I am going to be using this 0 uh, round brush, which is used mainly for detail at work. So you can see it's incredibly thin and incredibly small, which is really good for that, as well as signing your signature. I am going to be using a paint palette, which is um, this back of a Ferrero Rocher box, but anything you have offhand, like cardboard, will do just fine. You're also going to need some paper towels and a little bucket of water. 
Last but not least, you are going to be needing some acrylic paint. These are the Liquitex basics that I'm going to be using, which include cadmium red medium hue, cadmium yellow medium hue, and burnt umber. I'm also going to be using ultramarine blue, primary blue, and deoxyrhino purple. I'm also going to be using titanium white, ivory black, and hooker's green. Obviously these are the types of paints that I'm going to be using, but you can use whatever acrylic based paint you have offhand. Or watercolors if you have those too. Last but not least, I am going to be using some watercolor paper. Uh, this paper is a lot thicker than your regular sketchbook paper, which is why I'm going to be using it because it's going to hold the paint a lot easier than um, a really a much thinner paper. It's okay if you rip the edges, it's, it's not going to matter too much. So with that in mind, let's get started. So what I'm first going to be doing is starting off with a blue water base. I'm mixing a bit of a darker blue and painting really short brush brush strokes in order to get that kind of choppy effect. I'm then going to be adding in some greenery in the background with um, a little bit of dimension by adding a darker green on top and a little bit of an alleyway of water in the middle. I am then combining some yellow and green to create a bit of dark foliage and light foliage in the back by just dotting my brush up and down. I'm then going to be taking a darker brown and painting two archways to create a bridge with two lighter archways in the back and then swiping my brush along um, for the tree line in some water in the background. As you can see here it looks very impressionistic because of my really sketchy brush strokes which is going to give you that effect. So you can also see here the the bridge has a bit of dimension to it, but it's color separated, which is a lot of what Monet did in his artwork. The tree line and the water in the background are um, also incredibly sketch-like, which adds to that effect. The less you end up doing, the better your impressionist painting is actually going to look, so that's what I recommend when you're doing your own project. I really get, hope you guys enjoyed this video. and. Um, I hope you enjoy the next one too. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.